Hi, my name's Jenny Colgan. Uh, I'm a novelist and I write Doctor Who novels and audio plays. I think, well, this changed. I think Matt Smith looks like fun. He always looks like fun. It's always, you're always having a laugh and he doesn't take it too seriously. Uh, so I quite like that. I quite like that, you know, if he's thinking everything's hilarious and looking for hat opportunities, then that would make me less worried about things. Donna! Come on, I'm a 44 year old woman that shops in Marks and Spencers. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I, 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 it was the other lovely thing about Donna was the David Tennant era. Uh, of course, was when a lot of mums started watching it for quite obvious reasons. And so I, I just thought it was such a stroke of genius to put in the TARDIS someone that was just exactly like us. So, yeah, I, uh, I love her. I think she's brilliant. I think when I was a child, I was very scared of the Cybermen, very, very scared of, of them, and I found them very, very frightening. Um, just that kind of relentless, uh, you know. And actually, do you know, when the new series came back, the Rob Sherman episode, Dalek, it really brought it all back down to really crystallise the horror and the fear. And of course, Chris Eccleston did such a wonderful acting job on that show that I really felt it again. And then by the time we got to kind of spat dancing Dalek, I had kind of slightly lost it again. But um, yeah, as a kid, sorry. I've never not watched it. The first one I remember uh, with any clarity is City of Death because of, you know, the Eiffel Tower and because they were outside and, and so on. And, and that was really, there's a lot of Who fans that are kind of my age because that year we were all eight. Uh, so, you know, it really had this massive effect. And so I remember City of Death and my dad thinking it was funny and me not quite getting it, uh, but it was, I loved it. And then Warrior's Gate uh, was also that year and Warrior's Gate just felt like a dream to me. It was very, it's, Quite a rewarding rewatch, but you know, at the time I just felt like I was in uh, a Narnia uh, book. That's how much I loved it. Oh, it's embarrassing how often I've watched Silence in the Library. It is embarrassing. I sit down, I literally sit down and go, it's the screwdriver, it works in that. You know, I'll just mouth along the entire thing. I love it. There isn't a bit of it. It's so stuffed full of ideas. There's enough ideas in there for about nine things, and every time. Well, certainly the first nine or ten times I watched it, I got more from it every time. Now I, I suspect there's nothing else there, but oh, I loved it. I loved that episode, or those two episodes. I, I, I write quite a lot of historicals, and I really like historicals. Um, you know, obviously, because they're slightly easier, because with alien words, you have to make up all the rules and stuff. Um, and I live in Edinburgh and I'd like to have seen Edinburgh a couple of hundred years ago when it was a fount of ideas and so on. The problem is I, I don't want to go anywhere where I'm just going to immediately catch scarlet fever. <laughs> so there is a problem. I'd love to go to New York, I'd love to go to the Titanic, all the hi historical things, that's what I'd like to do. Uh, I'm a massive, uh, well I'm a big Douglas Adams uh, fan, I'm a massive uh, Richard Feynman fan, so I have a lot, I keep and uh, the, you know all the Los Alamos stuff so I have about 65 unproduced <laughs> screenplays and books and so on. I'm fascinated by that period. I never stopped being fascinated that you could get every scientist in the world together for 20 months and say right you know how we split the atom five minutes ago well could you learn how to blow up the world and they went yeah all right and it took them 20 months to do it.